Hi everyone, Marisa Stone here with Simon Says Social and the Systems Lounge, and I want to welcome you today to the 2018 Premier International Women's Business Systems Virtual Summit, where you get to learn all about the systems that our speakers are using to get things done. And I am super, super excited to have Jennifer White with us here today. She is going to talk with us all about business accountability in the process. Now, before you take off and go, oh my gosh, this is way over my head, slow down because this is an extremely important session and you do not want to miss it. Let me tell you a little bit more about Jennifer. Jennifer began her career as an engineer and I love her already because how many female engineers do we know, right? <laughs> and she combines this analytical in ingenuity with the talent of leadership. Super, super important skill to have. With a decade of professional experience in forming her expertise in supply chain strategy and process, systems design, things like that, Jennifer is a talented communicator with a passion for motivating her clients to transform their assumptions into high performance achievement. Super, super excited about that. She is known to apply her sharp analytical skills to deep innovative solutions. Inside her responsibilities in this process of supply chain and operations, she helped to reduce inventory, develop optimization across a global supply chain, implemented ERP systems, which I have no idea what those are, Jennifer, so you're gonna have to tell us later, and improved this stagnant process that was happening around her. Now, she applies this experience to real world environments, working with small businesses like you and I, and entrepreneurs who want to reach their own peak performance. Jennifer, I am so, so excited to have you here today. Oh, I forgot this last part. Jennifer has a degree in industrial engineering and an MBA in management. She is the bomb, guys. And today she's gonna be talking with us all about this idea of business accountability inside the process. So Jennifer, it's so exciting to have you here. I'm so glad to be here, Marissa. Thanks for having me on. So let's just begin at the beginning. What are we really talking about when we're talking about business accountability in the process? Like, are we talking about identifying processes in our business that will allow us to be successful? Like, what are we talking about? Yes, you have it exactly right. So what are those processes that allow us to be successful, high-performing businesses out here in the marketplace? One, if you don't know what that is, you probably don't have a process established. So we will need to start there with getting one established for you in which um, typically that just looks like, you know, what are all the inputs in your business that create the outputs for your business? So there's several touch points in your business every day. You have people, you have tools, you have systems you're using, you have a paper trail, documentation that's going mm -hmm. on. Um, so all of those are inputs into your business that allow you to create outputs, right, to service your customers. Right, right. So let's talk, let's apply this to entrepreneurship for a moment. One of the things that my clients always tell me is it's really easy to walk into an, an, an already established business and pick up the ball and run with it. It's quite a different scenario if you're building your own foundation from the ground up. So what is it that entrepreneurs really need to know about identifying these processes in how their business works? You want to start with how your business is going to run. So as an entrepreneur, we dig, you know, flexibility and freedom. So design your business around that, like whatever that means to you, design it around that. So if you only want to work certain days out of the week, then you're available only on those days and you stick to that. That becomes a process that becomes second nature in your business. So one best thing is about being an entrepreneur is you set the rules. So yeah, yes. you come from other corporations or other um, companies you've worked at where you didn't have a say so, but now you do. So that's the biggest part of having the freedom and the flexibility. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, for a lot of us, that's why we went into, you know, this idea of entrepreneurship to begin with, because we knew we had a skill that we could share with the world and we wanted the flexibility that we needed 
you know, oftentimes to be able to spend with your family or do the things that you love doing, or perhaps you have a hobby that's really important to you and you want time to do that. So there's lots of different reasons that people want that freedom. So I love that you're like, design your business around your life. Do not design your life around your business. Right. Yeah. So, so, okay. So you've convinced me I need to work on really evaluating this process inside my business. Mm -hmm. Where do I even begin? Like what would be the first step? So start with your goals and objectives in your business, right? So from ground zero, what, why did you start this business? Surround the design of the business around why did you start the business? You should have um, your mission, your vision, all of that ties into the processes that you're going to begin to create. Right. For your business. I mean, think about the businesses we interact with every day, like Apple and Google. Mm -hmm. They all have a, a mission, even Starbucks. And you see that in their processes every day as we interact with those companies as well. Right, right. And I love how you begin at the beginning with a goal or a vision for your business because a lot of people kind of go into it saying, oh, I know how to do this, so I'm just going to do this. Well, there's a lot more to developing this brand and developing this story. So you really do have to dive in to what your ultimate goals are. So that totally makes sense. So let's dive into this idea of this vision for a minute. I know in the business world, we talk a lot about a vision, like how many of us have heard that 10,000 times, right? Oh yeah. Is a vision for our business really all that important? Absolutely. I mean, it's going to be your bread and butter. If this is going to be your lifestyle, a part of you and who you are and the impact and legacy you want to leave in the world. Yes. A vision is very important and it's so important that you start with that. So when I say vision, I mean, okay, how many employees do you want to have? Do you even want to have employees? Do you want to mm -hmm. stay a solopreneur? What type of customers do you like to interact with? Mm -hmm. um, do you want to be a supplier type of business? Or do you want to be on the front end of a client-facing business? So those are all type of things that go into your vision, along with how much money you want to make at the end of the day. Um, how much time you want to spend working in your business and on your business are things you have to decide on in the beginning as well. And so when we're talking about our, our, our vision for our business, it really is very specific around how we want to operate, you know, what, what kind of things we're interested or even want to do, what types of things, you know, people we want to work with, what type, you know, what, what, what income level do we want to be at? Like all of those pieces we're not talking about our life's vision. We're talking about the vision for the business, correct? Right. Right. And I know a lot of times people don't dive that deep, but I found when you take the time to do that, when you start your business planning and strategizing, it makes things fall into place a lot easier because you kind of laid that foundation and you have an expectation already set for your business. And that makes so much sense. So for those of you out here going, oh, I really don't want a business plan. You heard it here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't have, your business plan doesn't have to be, you know, I mean, to the micro level. Right. But have some levels in, in your plan. That way you can maneuver and be flexible when things need to be adjusted. So just because you do a business plan today doesn't mean it's set in stone forever. I mean, right. you're allowed to tweak. You're the business owner. So you right. Can do you and you will evolve. I mean, that's one of the very first things I learned is that, you know, this, this process of evolution as, a, as an entrepreneur is almost, you know, relentless. Like every time I feel like, okay, I'm, I've got this. I evolve into something else that I'm even more excited or passionate about. And so, you know, you're constantly adding things and, and subtracting things and moving things around inside your business. So there is that too, you know? Exactly. Exactly. You will have shifts and pivots and yep. a lot of things thrown at you that you can't plan for. So mm -hmm. that's part of the learning curve and, and you'll learn what to do and how to react along the way. Yeah, totally. 
So uh, let's, let's, I mean, I want to dive a little bit deeper into how we truly identify our vision, because I think a lot of people don't understand how much that really needs to align and translate into goals, objectives, strategies, and the like for us to be able to run our business. So how do we identify a vision that then will lead us to those goals, objectives, and strategies? Yeah, so as we just were talking through before, this is your business. So a lot of it is going to depend on you, right, and your lifestyle. So one thing I think heavily about all the time are my core values. So when I first was developing my foundation, I had a hard time with core values because one of the hardest questions somebody gets ask is you know what are your beliefs what do you believe in who are you that's a very tough question <laughs> yes it is <laughs> it sounds simple but it's not yeah. um and i just remember my uh, my husband who's my business partner um in in our business we had sticky notes like i literally put words on sticky notes and had them all over myself <laughs> yeah we were like trying to identify what that vocabulary was. Like what, what does our business mean? What will it stand for? Yeah. And that really helped us set that vision and cast the vision um, onto you know, those strategies and those goals and objectives to further enhance where we want to go. And I love that you used yourself as kind of a human brain dump to really just get those phrases out there or those words out there so you can then pull from them, remove the things that aren't working and keep the ones that are. So I, I love that idea that I could see that being a very fun workshop. <laughs> I mean, some people do mind mapping as well. Like they just say the first letter or any letter in the alph alphabet and whatever comes out, you know, you can write down that word. Right. It's going to be something that's familiar to you, you know, yeah. or you wouldn't necessarily blurt out something that you're not, you know, used to doing or used to saying or having mannerisms or characteristics about yourself. Right. And that totally makes sense. And those need to align with whatever you, you know, whatever your vision is for your business. Otherwise you're out of alignment and those, and that's like not a fun place to be. Right. Right. Yeah. Totally agree with that. So you work with a lot of your clients on what you call sustainable balance. Can you tell us what this is and how we can achieve it? Yes, sustainability, it goes right along with repeatability. So once you have a process in place, how well can you perform that process from beginning to end over and over and over again? And then while you're performing it, how well is it being maintained? So this goes back into the processes that you create. One, you need to identify the process. So you need to document what you're doing. Right. Because if you can't um, express it every single time, say you have a customer come through. If every customer is having a different client experience at the end of the day, there's something wrong. Yeah. You're not capturing the true essence of your process because you want your customers to have a certain expectation around you and it's the same for them. So you want them to come back to you and keep having that same experience because once they don't have that same experience, they may not do business with you anymore. Right. Right. And I, and I, you know, so let's just take one of those processes, for example, let's take the onboarding process, right? Mm -hmm you know, of, of pulling your clients in for the first time. This is the first time they, they are aware of you and now they're taking the first move to initiate this connection with you. And if it's all over the place, they're not going to feel like you've got their back. You've got their best interest at heart or they're a VIP in your company. Right. Right. And this goes with the learning curve. Like I know when we first started out, there were quest common questions that would keep coming to us. So that told me, okay, you have an outlier here. There's something you're not addressing in the process during, you know, the client onboarding piece or whatever piece of the process. You're going to notice those common trends and things that stand out to where you can tweak and, and fix that. But you have to be noticing it. Like, yeah. you have to put on your guards as, as a not just the business owner of being in the details, but sometimes you got to come up here to the 30,000 foot level to understand what's happening holistically. Right. That totally makes sense too. And I love that analogy. <laughs> 
So one of the other things that you work with your clients on is what you call establishing performance measures. And we, we sort of kind of started alluding to those, but can we go into a little deeper? What are performance measures and how do we use them? Yes, performance measures are metrics that pretty much tell you if you're on target or not. So again, it goes back to tracking and documenting what you're doing. So if you have a, um, let's say you had a product-based business, for instance, and you're tracking, okay, how many units am I selling of product A versus product B every month? Right. So typically you would want to forecast what we used to call in supply chain. You yep. want to forecast how many units are we projected to sell in the month of March? And then when the actuals from March come in, you'll know, okay, we are on target or we were off target. You know, you can either be plus or minus from the baseline that you set. So right. those are performance measures that can capture the true essence of what's going on in a snapshot in time. Yeah. And like I said, you can, you can be plus, you can be minus. It just depends on where you want to be. Sometimes it may be okay to be a little bit low if you know you had inventory issues on that product. So right. it may not, you know, that product may not matter as much as product A in the long run. Yeah. And that totally makes sense because that is a, a stat, a number that you can look at really quickly and determine, yes, I hit my mark or no, I didn't. And if you didn't, and that was something that you were, you know, shooting for. That was one of your goals or objectives you were shooting for. You can dive back in and take a look at why that didn't happen. Exactly. And that's, that's definitely what you want to do. Like yeah. numbers don't lie. I right. always tell people who are afraid of statistics and quantification. I was like, data tells you the truth. Like there's no fudging here. Yep. And it doesn't discriminate. It does not care if you were homesick. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I know we are going to be diving much, much deeper into the next interview about this accountability in the process, but is there anything else we need to know right now? Um, I would just say if you're leery about knowing what kind of process to track, start writing down every kind of task that you do in your business. Mm -hmm. And if you start quantifying like where you're spending a lot of your time and you have to focus a lot on it, that may be a process you need to, you know, extrapolate a little bit more and dive into to see why am I spending so much time on this particular process? Is there anything I can adjust or tweak or introduce? into the overall system to make a change. Um, so I would say just start there and processes are fun. Like I, I love them. I'm an analytical nerd and I <laughs> love analyzing processes and people and systems. So yeah, don't be afraid of them. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, that leads me to my last question for you. How can people reach out to you if they want to perhaps get you to analyze all this for them and, and geek out on all of that or access some of your resources or, you know, perhaps even work with you? How can they reach out to you? Yeah, you can reach me at our website, www.dmjwgrp.com. So you can reach me there, send me a note, and we will respond right away. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jennifer. This has been some amazing information and I really, really appreciate it. Guys, those links are below this video. Make sure you click on those links and take advantage of some of the resources that Jennifer is sharing with you today so you can start diving in and taking a look at your processes and seeing if they're holding you accountable and making sure that you are accomplishing your goals and objective, objectives inside your business so you can upscale and up level. If you are part of the All Access Pass, stick around because Jennifer and I are going to dive much, much deeper into this idea of accountability in the process in just a few moments. If you have not yet grabbed that All Access Pass, click on the link below and it'll take you directly to the page that you need to go to to be able to snag that right now. Not only will you get all the live versions that you are watching right now inside the summit, but you're also going to get every single one of these much deeper dives that I'm taking with every single one of our experts on this panel. So you do not want to miss that one. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate 
all the information you've shared today. And guys, we will see you in the All Access Pass. Bye, everyone.